Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Reddit Aliens. I am John, and as always, thank you so much for being here. Good topic. Let's do it. What's the scariest true story someone has ever told you? Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Ah, I've got one. I'm in high school, and one day I get woken up by my mother to get ready for school. She pops her head into my room and turns on the light, saying, Hey, come on, wake up. It's time for school. I'm still half asleep and the light is bright for my eyes, but I look up to see and groggily tell her I'll be there in a bit. I get up, stretch, turn, and she's gone from the doorway, then head out to go to the bathroom. As I use the restroom, I hear a door close just outside. It's only when I start brushing my teeth and my mind starts clearing that I realize that something is wrong. First of all, it's 6 o'clock, which is a full hour earlier than I normally wake up. Second, during this time, my mom worked an overnight shift at the factory from 11 p.m. to 8 a.m. She should have been at work then. So then I start getting chills. The hallway in the house is an L shape. My room and the bathroom are located at the bottom end, right next to each other. And at the end of the long line, right next to my room door, is the doorway to the living room. This door had no doorknob, so we usually kept it propped open all the time. I wasn't sure if it was closed when I initially stepped out, but it is closed now. No one else should be awake to have closed it. I go back into my room and simply stand there, trying to make sense of what's going on. I go to wake up my brother, who shares the room with me and sleeps on the top bunk, when I realize that he's not there. Suddenly I get this overwhelming sensation of fear, and I start hearing the noises. From the living room, behind the now closed door, I can hear footsteps on the carpet. I hear the voices of two men whispering to each other, and hear my mom's cassette tapes being shuffled around. From the kitchen, I hear silverware being shuffled around in the drawers. Someone is messing with the stove, and I hear the clicking of the igniters. I am rooted to the spot, frozen in fear, and I decide that if my mom is home, I'll go to her. I bolt into her room and look around frantically. She's not there. The feeling of fear deepens. Her room typically had the windows covered, so it's very dark. I hear the noises continue, and then footsteps on the carpet near my room, where I just was. I shut the door and hid under the covers. Who knows how long I stayed there. I'm watching the clock, contemplating calling the police, but then realize I'm effed because the phone is in the living room. As I'm sitting there whimpering, I hear something shuffling in her closet, and out of the corner of my eye, I can see a shadow there. I immediately nope the F out of there, and run down the hall to my sister's room on the opposite end, the very tip-top of the L shape. Thankfully, she's there, and she wakes up freaking out over what I'm doing. I tell her what's going on, and she grabs a bat and leads the way out. We walk down the hallway and get to the door which is still shut with no knob. I peer into my room and everything's as I left it. She jimmies open the door with a screwdriver and we step into the living room. Nothing. Kitchen, nothing. I look more carefully into the living room and notice my brother passed out on the couch. I wake him up and ask him if he heard anything. Nope. Front door is locked. The back door is locked. Everything's fine. Then I simply get ready for school and get on with my day. To this day, I still don't know what happened. I don't know who turned on my light. I saw my mom's face and heard her voice clearly, but obviously it wasn't her. So I don't know what I saw in there. I don't know who shut the door, who made those noises, who was talking, messing with the stereo system, or who was in my mom's closet. Everything about that morning was just plain weird. For a while I thought I was crazy, until my sister moved into my mom's room later and I slept on her floor since she had an AC. In the middle of the night, I wake up to find a pair of fancy polished shoes before my face. I slowly look up to see a man in a tux standing over me, staring at me so intently. I cover my head and hope I could just fall back to sleep as fast as possible. 
There's a house in my city that has been boarded and locked up for 40 years after a man tortured and aired young children in his basement. There was said to be a large hole in the ground where he would just toss the kids when finished with them, but he was eventually caught and sentenced to life in jail where he committed suicide. Well, me and my friends went to where the house is, and trust me, this bitch is locked up good. The only thing we could really get through was one of the little basement windows on the side of the home. Too small to fit through, but nobody had ever pried off the boards on it. We were the first. We kicked in the little screen cover on it, which landed right next to the large hole. The basement was the creepiest thing I've ever seen. It was rotting, and the hole was a lot deeper than we'd expected. We couldn't see much, but there were pieces of chalk on the floor, which was creepy. We left and came back the next day to find the screen we had kicked in, leaning on one of the wooden support beams. This house is impossible to get into, and nobody has gone in it for over 30 years. There's no way someone went in there and put it against the beam. We never went back. And my grandmother, who lives in the city, and did at the time, told us that the story was in fact true, and struck the town with horror when it happened. We never told her about the scene. You know, first I'm reading this and I'm like, what would possess you to try to go into a house where things like that happened? But then I realized, like, I was a kid once, and I absolutely would have tried to go there too. Terrible that it is, and creepy ending, so, cool. This will probably get buried, but what the hell. When I was a kid, maybe around nine, me and my friends were playing in my Nana's garden. When you look out from the garden, there are fields in the distance, but they're close enough to be able to see the animals and whatnot. I remember vividly, we were just spinning in circles, being stupid kids, which one of my friends stopped still and started staring up at the fields. I stopped and looked, as did my other friend, and what we saw still sends shivers up my spine. It was a tall figure looked about eight feet, with long arms and legs and no face. I remember thinking it reminded me of a scarecrow, but faceless and darker. It walked in a strange manner, almost loping. We all stared at it as it came to a wall across the field, crouched down and disappeared. We have spoken about it since, and none of us have any clue as to what happened. My friend told me a year or so ago about Slenderman, it was sort of like that, but different. I'm a cynical bastard, so I would usually not so easily believe this sort of stuff, but I saw it with my own eyes. We had a very old neighbor that my dad would help with things around her house, getting her groceries in, small handyman type jobs, etc. I'm not sure if it was a real name, but everyone called her Bunny. She was a pretty sweet old lady and was always really grateful for anything my dad did to help her out. We Eventually, she died. For a couple weeks afterwards, we would get phone calls where it would just be dead quiet on the other side. We hadn't even gotten much phone calls before. But it didn't cross our mind that it was only happening after Bunny had died. I figured it must have been some automated phone call where the recording failed to kick in or something. At one point, my dad was talking to some of Bunny's family members, and somehow the topic of dead air phone call incidents came up in conversation. Apparently, several of Bunny's family members had been receiving similar calls. My dad found out at her funeral someone had put some change in Bunny's coffin so that she could call them from heaven. My aunt and uncle are pretty normal people who aren't superstitious at all, so they were looking for a house a couple of years ago and found one they liked. Right after they bought it, the man who sold it to them said, oh, and by the way, the house is haunted. My aunt and uncle thought nothing of it, but after the first night, when the family was eating breakfast, my uncle asked how my little cousin, who was about five at this point, slept, to which my cousin got a really excited look on her face and said, Halloween visited my room last night. I still refuse to spend the night there, ever. I'm a tech for my university theater company. Our theater company is old, the oldest university-run theater company in my country, actually. Our theater is old as well. It used to be a church. Anyway. So the previous tech is also my sister's boyfriend, so we sit around shooting the shit a lot. So he starts to tell me this. Sometimes we techs have late nights, so we'll just sleep in the theater and go to class the next morning. One night, when he had finished at 1 a.m. and there were no buses left to take, he decided to do just that. So he grabbed the prop couch, set it up on the stage, and went to sleep. He wakes up two hours later 
and he can hear footsteps behind him. Thinking it's security, they know us, and we're good friends with them so they don't bother us. He flips over to say hello, the footsteps immediately stop, and there's no one there. But, right after he flips over, facing the back of the stage, he hears a succession of quick clapping behind him, as if one person were in the audience. He flips back over, no one there. So he's a little freaked out now, but whatever. The guy is pretty tough. He goes back to sleep and ends up sleeping through the night. However, when he wakes up and opens the prop room on the side of the stage to put the couch back, all of the friggin' props were moved. We're talking moved and restacked in weird ways. This is not a guy who would joke about this or make this stuff up. He would have heard if someone came in and did it while he was sleeping. Some of that stuff was really heavy. A few weeks after he told me this, I actually got stranded at the school as well after working on a set really late. So kind of freaked out already, I set myself up the couch off the stage by the audience seats. I go to bed, and a couple hours later I get woken up by all these bright lights. All of my stage pot lights were on full brightness. As soon as I sit up, they go out. This is when I start freaking out, because when we're not using those lights, we unplug each and every one and bundle the plugs. I went and checked, and sure enough, not a single light is plugged in. I noped right out of there and got security to set me up in an empty dorm for the night on a one-time deal. Make sure ever since I don't get caught in the theater at night. This was from a friend who's really drama-free, down-to-earth, and honest. One night we were hanging out, and somehow creepy stories came up, and her boyfriend convinced her to tell this story. She didn't like to tell it. She went to Berlin to visit her sister a couple of years ago. Her sister had lived there just a couple of months. She arrived in the morning on a weekday, and her sister had to go to work. So my friend just went straight to her sister's bed to go to sleep. Her sister shut the blinds and left. After sleeping for a couple of hours, my friend woke up to a firm back rub. Someone was kneading her shoulders pretty hard, but not violently or anything. Without even opening her eyes, she said, Kara, stop. Let me sleep. And she opened her eyes and nobody was there. She sat straight up, opened the blinds, and flipped out. She went to a coffee shop around the be around people. When her sister came home, she told her what happened, and her sister said, Oh, you felt it too? The sister had had it happen to her twice, and it scared her so badly, but since it was in an in-between dream state, she thought it was some sleep paralysis thing, but not if it happened to two people. My mother told me a story about her friend who was a toddler. Every morning, the toddler would find a way out of its crib and into another room in the house. This isn't uncommon, but the parents thought it would be a good idea to record the child during the night to see how he did it. The next morning, they got the tape and were horrified by what they saw. In the middle of the night, some random woman walked into their child's room, picked him up, and walked off camera. They called the police and eventually found out that it was some older woman in the neighborhood whose son had died many years ago. Apparently, she would often sneak into their house to hold the child while it was sleeping. They live in a fairly small community, so leaving doors unlocked isn't strange. Sad and creepy, huh? My parents and I lived in a two-bedroom apartment here in Southern California. I would sleep in my own room on a full-sized bed, my parents' room being just down the hall. I always used to be afraid of that room. It used to creak way too much, though now I know it was just old rickety closets, and I never had a nightlight, so I'd always sleep in the dark. I just felt a dark, really uncomfortable atmosphere in that room, and in fact, I'd never be in there unless it was bedtime. Well, whenever bedtime did come, my mom or dad would lay in bed with me until I fell asleep. Then they would leave and go to their room, obviously. Here's where things get strange. I would always have a dream, to be completely honest, I cannot remember if it was a dream or reality. It felt extremely real to me, though, that the bed would start shaking. At first it felt like an innocent rocking, then it would feel like a huge rattle. I'd wake up, seriously startled, and check under the bed. When I did, I would see a demon or Satan's face grinning at me with an evil grin. I would run out of the room and hide it in the living room, and somehow I would lose him or it. I'd then go to sleep in my parents' bed and wake up in their bed as well. However, there were times where the demon or Satan, or whatever the evil entity was, did catch me with their arms, and then I'd fall to the ground and be dragged under the bed. 
I would see stars and then complete darkness. I'd wake up in my bed crying and my parents could not figure out what was wrong. This all kept happening until I was 10. That's when we moved out of that apartment for financial reasons. But God, I can still remember it to this day and it scares me. My girlfriend's aunt worked at this kindergarten where a lot of weird stuff happened and then there was this all around sense of discomfort among the employees. Anything electric would turn on and off for no reason. There was a sense of being watched. There was a janitor there who one day found there was no electricity at all. He went to check the system located in the cellar, which was isolated from the rest of the building, with access through an outside door that only the janitor had keys for. Every single wire had been pulled out with brute force, and the M. Night Shyamalan thing twist? It had snowed a couple of days before, and there wasn't a goddamn footprint leading in or out the only door. This shit right here, though, this is what haunts my dreams. There was one door leading to a storage, which was never used. None of the kids wanted to go near it, which is more than enough reason to burn down the place with holy gasoline, in my opinion. But one day, while dressing a kid to go out, the kid, three years, barely speaking, started to cry. The aunt asked me what was wrong, and the kid pointed toward the door and said, The bad man. Okay, I'll tell you something that is both very creepy and very, very real. It's about my little sister. Ever since my sister was little, she always wanted the lights in the hallway switched off, her door closed, and her nightlight on. Otherwise, she would start crying and screaming. We always just thought she was scared of the dark, just like most kids are. But just last year, she's 24 now, she told me why she had wanted it like that. She told me that every time the door was ajar, she would feel that someone was standing there watching her. And if the light in the hallway was on, she could actually see the silhouette of someone. Often, she would also wake up in the middle of the night and see someone lean over her bed. Whenever this happened, she would be terrified and wanted to scream, but she was never able to. As a result of this, she often slept with our parents. But even that stuff like that still happened. Once she was lying there with both of the parents asleep, when she saw me and my older brother walk into the room and stand by each side of the bed, I had asked, can we go to the candy store? And she heard her mom answer, yes, yes, yes. She crawled into the blankets and stayed there the rest of the night. Apparently, this is something that actually happens to people and is connected to night terrors, which my sister also had when she was like two to three years old. It's got something to do with parts of the brain going to sleep while other parts are still awake. I can't remember what it's called, though. Well, mine's kind of shitty. Last year, we just moved into our house. Furniture all set up, boxes unpacked, everything was hunky-dory. That night, I still wasn't sleepy at 11 p.m., so I decided to watch some TV. I watched TV for about 20 minutes when the room got really cold. The TV then turned off, didn't think anything of it, turned it back on. After another 10 minutes, the TV started going all static and then started flipping through all the channels by itself. I was staring, thinking, what the actual... It then stopped at a late night music channel and the volume went full effing blast. I started screaming. My parents came in and turned the TV off, yelling, what the f... Told them what happened. They said I was probably sitting on the remote or something. Bullshit. They left and I went back to bed. Around 3 a.m., I woke up to a freezing room and my phone alarm was going off. I then yelled, the f man, if a f***ing ghost is here, you need to f***ing leave because I'm going to sleep phone alarm then suddenly stopped. I went back to sleep. No parents came to tell me off, weirdly. Nothing happened ever again. TL. DR. I had a ghost and told it to f off, and it never came back. When I was about 16, I went to a party with some of my high school buddies. I got pretty drunk and spent the night on my friend's couch. Around 3 a.m., I woke up to go to the restroom. I went down the hallway to turn and enter the restroom when I almost tripped over something. I turned on the light and found a creepy looking clown doll looking up at me from the floor. I didn't think much of it at the time. I kicked it to the side, did my business and went back to sleep. The next morning I asked my friend about the doll and he swore there was no such thing in the house and it was not where I had left it. I chalked this up to being drunk or him playing a joke on me and left it at that. About two weeks later my parents were out of town and I was staying by myself. I locked the doors and went to sleep. I woke in the middle of the night, went to the restroom right outside of my room. I turned on the light 
and that same doll was sitting on my bathroom counter, staring at me with the creepiest smile I've ever seen. This caught me the, out, and I grabbed it, went out the front door, down the driveway, and threw it into the woods across the street. My friend, whose house I first encountered the doll at, had not been to my house since before the first encounter. This really bothered me for a few days, because I had no idea how it could have traveled to my house. I even went to look for it the next day, and it was gone. Fast forward a year, I hadn't seen the doll since it was on my counter, and my family and I had moved about 10 miles away. On my first night in the new house, I go to sleep only to wake up about two hours later. I check my cell to see what time it is, and I see something next to me out of the corner of my eye. I turn toward it and shine the light from my phone toward the pillow next to me. There's the clown doll just smiling, its creepy little pink smile at me. I run out of my room and wake up my parents. I tell the story of the doll rather quickly to my dad, and he goes and checks out my room. He returned around 30 seconds later and told me there was nothing there and go back to sleep. I've not seen the doll since, and I'm 28 now. Okay. <laughs>